going to be on circles at work. Uh, a lot of you guys are familiar with the circle concept, or uh, if you're not, it's basically ways to determine uh, social boundaries uh, and relationships, which sometimes can be confusing for people. Um, the circles that we use uh, normally uh, for our personal lives is a little bit different than work. Um, so I like this model. It does change for work, and that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today since uh, most of you guys are either in the employment department or you're in community based day sports. Some of you guys are looking for jobs and understanding social boundaries and how they differ from your personal boundaries um, at work uh, can be very important to both uh, getting a job and maintaining a job and uh, maintaining your personal uh, reputation, which can be important. So as we said, uh, the purpose of this training is to highlight how social boundaries at work may be different than those in one's personal life. Social boundaries keep us safe. Many people fail to recognize appropriate social boundaries. Further, they may not recognize that rules for one's private life may differ from those at work. This can make them vulnerable to abuse or accusation, which can affect their ability to maintain, uh, maintain or attain employment. So this is the normal circle concept. There are a couple of different uh, ways this is expressed, so this is a pretty common one. The circle concept helps us to categorize our relationships. We assign each level of intimacy to a color and a name that helps us to maintain a level of intimacy. Uh, again, this lesson is designed to help us to understand social boundaries as they apply to the work environment and how these boundaries may differ from their private encounters uh, when not at work. Normally, the circles concept is presented like this. Uh, how does this differ from the work example? And why do you think it does? Why do you think it's important to have sort of slightly different roles at work than maybe you would uh, even in the day ab or in your own personal life? So let's discuss kind of the normal circles um, and then how they differ from the work circles. Um, the purple circle is you. It represents you. You get decide to decide who's closest to you, and it's the same uh, at work as it is at home. You are always the most important person in your world of circles. Um, let's take turns telling why we are we are the most important purple person in our circles. What makes you so special? So that's something to discuss. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you can discuss it with your friends or. Uh, you know, shoot me an email. That works too. Okay, so the blue uh, hug and kiss circle and the green side hug circle. You may have noticed that these circles are not on the work circles chart. This is because when we are at work, there's a professional way that we act and professional boundaries should be respected while at work, even with people who are friends or even family. When you are at work, everyone should stay in the yellow or orange circles. It is a violation of company policy at the Center of Hope and most other places of business to engage in hugging and kissing at work. As such, these circles only apply uh, to what is done uh, on your own time or maybe the day hab. But even in the day hab, these activities may be restricted. Um, remember that even if you and the person you're hugging are okay uh, with the side hug or whatever, um, even if you both consent to that, you can still make other people feel uncomfortable. Plus, when you're at work, uh, there may be accusations of favoritism if you're too much, too affectionate to one person and another person feels left out. Um, so it's just better to treat everybody the same way. So at work, these two circles don't, don't apply. Uh, when I used to work with my wife, I called her Mrs. Stewart, even, to make sure that people knew I wasn't giving her favoritism. Uh, the yellow circles, a handshake or a fist bump. Uh, the handshake is the ideal physical greeting to offer someone while at work. Still, you may decide whether or not to be touched and nobody should shake your hand unless you want them to. If both parties agree, then a handshake is the best way to give a physical greeting at work. Stand in front of the person whom you wish to greet and make eye contact and say hello and put out your hand. If the other person wants to shake your hands, they will take your hand and you both gently shake together. 
If they are uncomfortable with shaking hands, they may not take your hand and may tell you that they are uncomfortable doing so, and that's okay, because they can decide whether or not to be touched just as you do, and you should not take this personally, especially in the time of COVID. The orange wave or verbally greet circle, that's what I'm calling this one. Wave or greet someone who is too far away for a handshake or does not want to be touched. You may also verbally greet someone as they pass by and are either too far away or too busy to stop and shake your hand. Remember not to take it personally if someone does not want to shake your hand or a fist bump. They may they get to make the rules about when they're not, not they're being touched. And honestly, sometimes I'm, I'm walking through Norris and I will wave at you, but I don't stop and shake everybody's hand because I'm kind of busy sometimes. Uh, so again, don't take that personally. If people can't stop and talk to you, it doesn't mean they don't like you. It's just means they're at work and they're busy. Sometimes children um, may show up at work. People may bring their kids to work for some reason. Uh, it's best to wave at children um, anyway. I wouldn't even shake their hand, honestly, just because they're, they're not my kids and I don't want to be accused of anything. Uh, it's better to be uh, safe than have someone accuse you of something that you didn't do. So children, you're just going to be extra careful. Uh, wave if they try to hug you. I would step back and say, you know, that's not appropriate. Um, children don't know as much as you, and you, you've got to show them the correct way to act. Okay. <clears throat> the stranger circle, the red circle. Surrounding all the circle, other circles is the stranger circle or the red circle. The red color reminds us to be cautious. Like a red light or a stop sign, it can be important to be careful with people in this group. Therefore, we may not always have conversations with people in this group unless they are a special stranger, such as a police officer or some kind of uniformed person. There is usually no need to talk, touch or talk to people in the red circle. Uniform items such as special hats or badges can be clues as to whether or not we may talk to them. For instance, you may, uh, you may have met someone at the Center Hope who has a badge on and maybe you didn't know them before, it's probably okay to talk to them even if you've never met them. However, if you are uncomfortable or unsure, you should ask your supervisor if a stranger uh, you don't recognize is there and making you feel uncomfortable. So again, just to recap, you know, uh, we're trying to be uh, respectful and, and um, make everybody feel safe and make everybody feel equal. Um, so just remember that though you have human rights and you have civil rights and you have a uh, right to your own body, um, that there are some rules that you agree to at work uh, that are conditions of work. And one of them is uh, recognizing appropriate self social boundaries. So that's kind of what we were talking about today. Um, so just to recap really quick, okay. The purple circle is you. You get to decide whether or not you get touched, um, and you don't. You aren't required to shake people's hands if you don't want to. Okay, blue and green, which would normally be like the friends and family or a side hug or you know kissing circles. We don't do those here at work, so they don't apply. You treat everybody like they are the same. Okay, handshake is the ideal. Uh, reading. Uh, fist bumps are becoming more popular now, especially with COVID, so those are totally fine too. Okay. Uh, wave or verbally greet. Always always appropriate. Um, and, you know, like I said before, don't make someone stop to greet them. You may just say hi in the hallway. If, if I say, how are you doing? Um, usually when I say, how are you doing? I'm not really looking for your life story. I'm just looking for it's just a good greeting that people use. Um, so don't make, take it personally if I don't have time to hear your life story if I say, how are you doing? And again, the red stranger circle, you know, you may be at work and maybe somebody comes in to make a delivery or something. All the doors are locked down in Norris, though, so um, if someone comes in, they were buzzed in by Diana or Courtney, so it's probably okay to talk to that person uh, to the extent that you feel comfortable doing so and it doesn't take away from your time at work. Hope you enjoyed this training, and we will see you next time.